I almost failed in life when I came to the United Kingdom. So in this video, I want to talk about how I managed to overcome that and share my experiences because, I mean, I've been in the United Kingdom for, you know, 23 years. So I want to share that with you. But before we get started, I need to define what failing in life is before we move on. Because sometimes people think it's about money alone or whatever it is. So let's get that definition out of the way first. So failing is not meeting an expectation and also experience a lack of success in pretty much anything that you're planning to do. So the first thing that really made me just live my life was not having goals to work towards. Yes, I had basic goals, but sometimes I'll set some goals which are not even realistic. Like, for example, uh, when I got to the United Kingdom, my goal was to uh, purchase a piece of land or buy a house in six months. Well, I realized that that was ridiculous. It was um, not real. So these are not the goals I'm talking about. I'm talking about long-term goals, which you could work to with some baby steps. So this was the first thing. I did not really have some goals. And one of the things that really distracted me was the fact that I had the wrong friends and I used to drink a lot. So you'd find that Fridays, Saturdays, Sundays, or sometimes even during the week, because of the jobs that I was doing, this was agency work. I mean, I call them survival jobs. You know, these were jobs which you had to do to survive. So these jobs were too manual, there's a lot of la manual labor, a lot of lifting and all that. So by the time you get home, you're so tired and sometimes you're so stressed because the money was, was not enough. I would just resort to drinking. So in that moment, it felt like it was okay because I'm relaxing and I needed it and I justified it. But it had long-term effects and not really long-term effects, but it had pretty much immediate effects because it made me very tired. And when I woke up, I woke up with a hangover and I was even more miserable. Thank God. The last time I had alcohol was 2002. So, I mean, for over 20 years, I haven't touched alcohol and I've never smoked anyway. So I'm just referring to the initial part of my life when I went to the United Kingdom. So the alcohol really was was uh, was a problem for me because the friends that I had also used to drink and there was nothing productive in those discussions. It was all about drinking, football, and to an extent, a lot of uh, the guys I used to hang around with were all about women. So the first thing I did was to change my environment. I had to change the people I, I was associating, associating with. So as the saying goes, birds of the same further flock together. Or if you want to be, if you're an eagle, don't swim with the ducks. So I had to really move myself out of that environment. So I know it was difficult because we used to meet a, a lot at work and we used to live in the same neighborhood. But I had to move out of that city or that town rather for me to really start making a change to my life. And this wasn't very easy because as you can imagine that in the diaspora, you don't have a lot of friends and sometimes these friends become family. But in my case, I had to make a conscious decision to really, you know, move myself out of these guys I used to hang around with. And from that moment, I realized that even my relationship with my family, my wife and kids, it was getting much, much better because they had more attention and I had to cut out the alcohol anyway. So that was gone. That's the point where I started really thinking about life and where I wanted to go in life and what I wanted to achieve. And this moves me on to the next part, which is if you don't make goals in life, pretty much you're in trouble because what are you living for? You know, and life becomes even more stressful because you've got nothing to work towards. So having a goal it's also very, very important if you want to be successful or rather if you don't want to fail in life. So the goals now were getting our children some education, a very good education, making sure we travel, we give them exposure and so on. So with these goals now all set, the next step now was how do we achieve these goals? So we started working towards those goals. And although life was difficult, we were just ticking the boxes because we could see progress. Like my kids were excelling very well. They were all homeschooled, by the way. So they were excelling very well. We would get, I would get them all assessed and it was, you know, it was really good. So at least when we were working or rather when I was working, it felt like it was difficult, but there was progress, which gave me that energy to, to keep on moving on. The second thing was costs. The costs of rent were quite high. So we made sure that we lived pretty much away from the city and, and, we tried to live within our means because what I realized and, you know, the UK, 
especially or the West rather, it has a lot of glittery things, right? So if you're not someone who is focused, you can be easily dragged into going into fashion or buying expensive cars. In fact, I will be covering that in a moment. But there's so many nice things that you may need in life, which is so just distracting, which will lead you to want to purchase a lot of these things, which are not very beneficial to you anyway. So we made sure that we lived pretty much within our means. So that's the other thing as well, because it's very easy for you to go into a shop and get a credit card or get a department store card and just start buying clothes. Very, very easy. So you have to be very, very disciplined. So that's the other thing that you have to be aware of. The fashion, yes, of course, you want to wear decent clothes, which are warm, nice, looking good and so on. But if you go crazy into the fashion, it can be very expensive. And here in the West, there's a lot of fast fashion. You know, sometimes you wear something and you think this is the, uh, an amazing thing. Before you know it, you probably won't it even once. And by the way, you'll have a massive wardrobe of clothes. And pretty much what are you doing with that? You know, some people have even 20 pairs of shoes. But where are you wearing them, you know? So shopping for clothes or, or following fashion can be something that can uh, stop you from becoming successful. So, of course, you have to be reasonable when you purchase things. Luckily... Of course, I fell into that trap initially, but luckily I wasn't really into that because I realized that most of the time I'm working, most of the time I'm uh, working double shifts. Where am I wearing these clothes anyway? The other thing as well that makes people very unsuccessful in the West is the cars. It is very, very easy, especially if you've got a very good credit rating, to walk into a dealership and leave with a brand new car. In fact, the funny thing is before I came to Zimbabwe, my neighbor was literally crying that life was so difficult and she couldn't do this, she couldn't do that because the cost of living was very high. But to my surprise, a few months later, she was driving a brand new car. And obviously she didn't pay cash. These are cars you get on credit, you know, on finance. So can you imagine how one minute you're talking about you're struggling and the next minute you have a brand new car? So this is one of those things which can be or can lead you to not really making it. I know there are so many arguments towards getting a brand new car and all of that kind of stuff. You see, people are different in levels, okay? This is not a one statement that's covering pretty much everyone. Some people have high salaries. They can afford to pay $300 or £300 towards a car. They're just using headache-free. You don't have to worry about MOT. The car is passing or buying parts and all that kind of stuff because they can afford it. They're an engineer or they're, they have a high-level job. Yeah, pretty much I'm not talking about those people. I'm just talking about just generally. You know, if you are on a tight budget, adding cars and adding credit can be something that can be very distractive to your life and uh, your success. So this again, I mentioned the cars. It moves me on to credit cards and debt. So if you're already struggling, you see, the, um, the society here in the United Kingdom, it's based on borrowing, okay? That's how the economy goes, it's based on borrowing. So you have to be someone who's resistant to taking on a lot of debt. Because if you have goals, one of the best way or the sure way of making sure you don't get there is by tempering with your income. So if your income is, let's say, 2500 per month, you should not be taking credit that exceeds that. So what a lot of people do is they take a credit card here, they get a store card here, they have this loan here, that loan there to just cover all their things that they need in life. So what happens now is you're going to be paying all these things with interest, okay? You're going to be paying back with interest. So let's say, this is just an example, you 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 have a thousand dollar loan here or thousand pounds loan you're going to pay back as 1200 now imagine you have five cards and you have this and that everywhere so your initial amount that you've borrowed you're going to be paying back with a huge interest so this is one of those things that will stop you from really achieving your goals because if you put some money aside for that now all that money is going towards it's now going towards the interest so now you're stuck in a cycle where you're just going over and over and over, just working to service the debt. And this, unfortunately, is the way people live in the West. I mean, I remember when I used to work at the factories, there were guys with eight credit cards. 
eight credit cards just to live off of. It's crazy, but this is real. So if you're someone who has goals and you've come or you've gone to the diaspora and you want to work towards something, then you want to stay away from the debt, okay? The next thing I want to talk about is when you start making your plans, you have to make sure that these plans are written down and you're ticking them as you go. So it doesn't necessarily mean that the plan has to be you going back to Zimbabwe. But of course, if that's the plan to go back to Zimbabwe for an example, well, the question now becomes, okay, what are the things that you need to retire in Zimbabwe? So one, perhaps is buying land. If you know that your budget doesn't allow you to buy land, then of course you want to perhaps start building in the village, right, where you're from. So you want to put some costs of the building of the village and all of that. And slowly, slowly, if you start ticking those, then you have, you know, progress. But it's very difficult for you to achieve this if you have a lot of debt and if you're paying a lot of interest. That I can tell you for sure. And like I said, the, the small things, then they may seem small. For example, buying an iPhone every year. A lot of people fall into this trap of buying these iPhones because they fall for the marketing. If I take a picture with an iPhone 15 Pro Max and an iPhone, um, let's say, 13 Pro, you could not tell the difference. Now, I'm, I know what I'm talking about because I use a lot of cameras for video. At one point, I convinced myself that there was a massive difference. No, it's a very small difference. So these inc incremental updates may make you seem like you really want this phone or you really want the latest one. But really, for what? These phones are expensive, especially if you go for the high end. We're talking about £1,400, which you're paying over, let's say, two years at £70, £80 per month. If you put that money aside towards something or maybe buying building material for the next two years, this £80 a month, that could go a very long way. But what do we do? We find ourselves buying these iPhones. And really, they're for communicating. I mean, if these iPhones were being bought for using on social media, taking videos and all of that, then I can understand. But the phone is not really making any money. So some of these things, the spending can really, really, really derail you from really becoming successful when you are abroad. The next thing I want to talk about is sending money home. Now, this one here is a bit controversial because, of course, it's going to depend on uh, different circumstances because sometimes, you know, people may have families that really, really need it. But what I've realized is sometimes uh, people back home, they hype this idea that they are suffering so much. And when you really sit down and analyze what they're using the money for and really if they, they, they need this money, you'll realize you'll start realizing that actually all these problems are being inflated you know sometimes the money you're sending is not even the money that they're asking for they're asking you more and more and more so you now put them on a budget where you think you're helping but you're being scammed too i'm not saying everyone is in that situation but i'm just saying generally speaking so you have to be very careful on how that money is spent because at the end of the day, you're going to find that you're going to be living in the United Kingdom for 10 years, 15, 20 years. But you've got no plan of where you're going to retire, how you're going to retire, or where you're going to retire. It is crazy. Can you imagine 20 years of working and you have no plan? That's a sad situation. So you have to make sure that you take care of your money. The other thing I want to talk about is saving money. Saving money is very, very important because if you don't put money on the side, this is what pushes you to want to go and borrow because the diaspora doesn't have that network of people where you can go ahead and you know borrow a little bit here borrow a little bit there from your friends and then pay them back everyone else is in the same situation you see so it is very very difficult this is why if you don't save money or put money on the side it's going to make you really 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 struggle because that's where now you're pushed to go and get some debt and when you go to get some debt in a desperate situation you're going to be paying higher interest rates so you have to be mindful of that. Now, for you to achieve that level of living your life without all these things happening is to live within your means and making sure that you're not attracted by all these shiny objects, okay? And also, you need to have the type of friends that are productive and that encourage you to do good. Now, let's move on to the next thing. And this is, I am going to expand this on, on this one. But this is a way of getting some side hustle, okay? I'm going to be talking about this, you know, in a great detail, as I mentioned. But getting extra income is something that is very important because if you rely on a salary, in most cases, it's not enough. So you need to have a side hustle. 
and this is what will help you become successful and work towards your goals. So these are the sort of things that really made me, that almost <laughs> made me poor because I didn't know any better. So I had to learn a lot of these things as I, as I go. So it is very, 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 very tough. Now, I made a video on how to become successful. I will link it in the video description below. This is a very good book to, uh, I mean, a very good video to watch because if you are in Zimbabwe and you want to be successful there and make some money on the side, this video is definitely for you. And also, I created a community of like-minded people on RuaOrganic.com. Go ahead, sign up. This is a group where we discuss so many things that can help us become successful in life. So go ahead, the link to that is in the video description below. Anyway, guys, in the next video, I'm going to be talking about what you need to do to become successful in the diaspora. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you again in the next one. Take care.